Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palne Pramanikam. You have tried so many things to lose weight, but you still can lose weight. You might not be the problem. Your gut might be. The bacteria in your gut might be the culprit. And that is why I'm here to say, don't go with your gut. Let's dive deep into it. So since my time restricted feeding video, I've been getting so many emails that I lost 10 kilograms of my weight. I lost five kilos of my belly fat. I lost two kilos of my disappointment. I'm so glad that you guys were able to make the change because it has been three to four months. So it has become a habit now and you don't have to use your willpower that much. So since we have nailed down this concept of time restricted feeding, all the other steps that we're going to discuss in this channel is about further measures on top of this time restricted feeding bottom line. My friend Saravana Kumar keeps complaining that day I have done everything possible to I'm not able to lose weight and he's complaining by eating chicken biryani in the middle of the night that too right in front of me if you're not like my friend Saravna Kumar and has done everything possible to decrease weight including cutting your hair reducing your head weight and losing out your mind and still you cannot lose weight then problem might not be you it might be your gut bacteria the human intestine has 100 trillion microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, viruses. These are all complex interconnected species. Together, we call this as gut bacteria or gut microbiome. Out of this 100 trillion microbes, some have good bacteria and some are bad bacteria. And obviously, we need good bacteria to be more in our small intestine for the overall health. For example, imagine our body as a water theme park and intestines are the complex intertunneled water slides through which all the good and bad bacteria are sliding every day and having the time of their life. We want the good bacteria to take the water slide back, go up to the start and then start doing the tunneling thing again. But the bad bacteria has to be kicked out. Every body has a unique composition of bacteria and it's based on multiple factors including what you eat, how you eat, when you eat, whether you sleep, exercise or watch Netflix. It is almost similar to marriage. You know, the spouse that you get is based on your likes, dislikes, comments and the common Facebook groups that you share. If it was my mom, she will take me to the astrologer and ask him, what is the good bacteria for pal? So what does this gut bacteria do? They do so many things, including regulating the immunity. But the most important thing that they do is to they help us digest the food particles, which we cannot digest with the enzymes given by God. My friend Saramna Kumar is asking, can this digest the stones in the ration rice? I said, given a chance, this will digest you itself. So for example, when you eat dosa, the enzymes provided by the God is being secreted by salivary glands, stomach, pancreas and liver. And all these enzymes digest almost like 95% of the dosa, but the remaining 5% is out of syllabus to the body. So all those out of syllabus questions will be answered by this gut bacteria. I think my wife needs this because she keeps on saying, I can't stand anything, but cannot digest all your so-called jokes. She will need this. So when they are digesting these foods, they provide you additional calories as well. So when you are counting calories, you need to account for those uncounted calories as well. That might be the reason that you might not be losing weight. So basically, we are doing the math wrong when we are hitting a plateau. We should get our math right to get into the weight loss valley and start the journey. My friend Saravna Kumar is like, day in a plateau valley, a prince solity, you are mounting up my pressure. Mounting up. So to prove this, let me tell you a first research experiment I was involved in when I first came to United States. We took like 50 patients with obesity and gave them like low calorie diet and physical activity and exercise for 12 weeks, three months. So after three months, like 20 people did not lose weight at all, but the remaining 30 did notice some kind of weight changes. So we took the stool specimen of the people who did not lose weight and looked under the microscope and then see what kind of gut bacteria that they have. I was given the job of collecting the stool specimen in this research study because I was the most junior most person. I still remember this very distinctly because 10 years ago when I came in, my mom was like telling all the relatives that my son pal is doing amazing things, so many, seeing so many people and seeing so many things. And I was collecting stool specimen. The most interesting part of the study is that the bacteria that is seen on these people who did not lose weight was significantly different from the bacteria in the people that actually lost weight. That is why we thought about probably the gut bacteria plays a role in weight loss as well. So this study proves that despite your maximum effort of diet control and exercise, some patient population might not lose weight because of their gut bacteria because their gut bacteria is not just bad 
it is evil. This might not be the 99.99% bacteria that Harpic kills. This might be the remaining 0.1%. So that brings us to the next question. How do we know what kind of bacteria we have in the small intestine and whether we know how much good bacteria we have? That is a million dollar question. Research is in progress. In 10 years from now, I can guarantee you that every individual will have their own unique composition of bacteria and people will be like, which bacteria you have? So once we figure this out, eventually I have an idea. I'm going to start a website called BacillaiMatrimony.com where all the bacteria from all the different communities can upload their picture and the tagline is marry me if you have guts. Though we still don't know the individual species of bacteria, whether it is good or bad, we do know that a certain category of good bacteria and certain category of bad bacteria. And we'll be able to identify that based on our stool specimens as well, if we are interested. So thank you Ombre for sponsoring this video. Ombre is a company that could actually tell you what kind of good bacteria and bad bacteria that you have in your stool. What they do is they send a kit like this to your home and then it has a stool specimen collection kit as well and has all the instructions of how you can do this. And once you are done, they are going to give you a detailed prescription of what kind of good bacteria and bad bacteria you have and what you can do to improve that by based on probiotic supplementation. So due to the fact that you might be eating lunch or eating dinner, I took the liberty to skip the process of how to collect the stool sample. You could order these ombre test kits. This is available here in America and Canada and the link is in the description. Yes, this is a sponsored video, but I have used this test before on few of my patients in the past as well. And you know that the sponsored amount will go to our Aishwaryam Trust in Madurai. And you should contribute as well if you think that you're getting some benefit out of this video. That brings us to the next question that how we can make sure that we have good bacteria in the small intestine. It is all about lifestyle. It is not something that happens overnight. It is not like something like a pill that I can give to you. So you, your bad bacteria all disappears and it gets populated with good bacteria within five days. It is a long term lifestyle change. It takes at least six months to one year. Instead of focusing on what you can eat to promote the good bacteria, the easiest thing is to do is to what to avoid to promote the good bacteria. So not only weight loss, this gut bacteria research is extrapolated into multiple fields, including autism, any mental health disorders, including immunity dysregulation. Every aspect of the body will boil down to this gut bacteria. It is going to be a huge thing 10 years from now. And I can see that on the preliminary research studies. The first thing that you should avoid is avoid processed or ultra processed food. What I mean by that is avoid anything that comes in a packet or in a box which is processed from its natural form. I want you to look into the ingredients and if that food contains any of these following number one high fructose corn syrup, number two monosodium glutamate MSG, number three artificial flavor, number four artificial sweetness, number five artificial color, Anything artificial is not good for you because your intelligence might be artificial as well eventually. So it is like you're born naturally with some good bacteria, but with all these ingestion, your small intestinal bacteria becomes artificial. To further explain this, I'll let you know that, you know, I am an Indian. I came here to United States 10 years ago. This is almost like my body is Indian, but I have a fake American accent like, hey, what's going on? Oh my God, you're trying to tell me something? Get out of here. Whatever I do, I will never get this American accent. Or it might be the other way around having a fake Tamil accent like Meenakshi Sundareshwar movie from Netflix. So after avoiding all these processed food, the second thing that you can avoid is non-vegetarian. I know you are going to close the channel right away. I told this to my friend Saranna Kumar. He was like, instead of not eating non-veg, it is better to starve. And I said that is a good idea as well. So he's a pure non-vegetarian to a point that he avoids non-separately and avoids vegetarian separately. He doesn't eat anything that is stationary. He always eats that flies, that runs, that swims. It has been shown in multiple studies that plant-based diet improves the gut bacteria significantly to a point that it helps in weight loss, it decreases the risk of heart attacks and also it increases your immunity. Animal-based diet is considered to be non-inferior to plant-based diet but no study have shown that animal diet is actually superior to plant-based diet. If you burn the processed food and non-vegetarian food, your gut bacteria will take care of burning the calories. 
not eating non vegetarian is like a very difficult task for me as well so i started slowly by eating just one non vegetarian meal per week so there are 21 meals per week three times a day seven days a week so 21 meals so you can start with just focusing on one meal per week of having non vegetarian and then see whether you can decrease the frequency as much as possible So having good bacteria in your gut is not a short term Disneyland movie lasting for hour and a half it is like the Indian Tamil TV series like Pandian Stores which has episodes after episodes at least the good bacteria journey will end Pandian Stores will not So call for action is two things number one i want you to review your daily food intake and then see whether you are taking any of this on a daily basis number one any cake or any bakery products number two biscuits number three any snacks savory snacks number four microwave ready meals number five bread number six breakfast cereals these are just examples but you can look into your daily food intake and then see what is the what are the other items that i might have missed and you can list down in the comment section so you will understand all these are processed especially when it comes in a box or packaged content because they need to add some preservative to extend the life span of that ingredient Number 2 my friend Saranno Kumar is doing a protest for the fact that I ask him not to eat non vegetarian food I can guarantee you that any kind of protest he does he will never do fasting protest I wanted to ask you whether it is reasonable to ask your family members and friends to have or limit one meal per week to non vegetarian meal what do you think about it i'd be more than happy to hear from you uh, stay safe get vaccinated all this is for the project one belly at a time it is absolutely important as usual just an update from our aishwaryam trust is that we have few more family members joined in our community we are expanding from a 50 bed hospital to a another 50 bed hospital right next to each other in vilacheri madurai if you want to contribute please do so the uh, link is in the description and uh, we can make this world better together i'll see you in the next video bye bye